Chemical reaction Whenever a chemical change occurs, we can say that a chemical reaction has taken place. In a chemical reaction, a new substance is formed which is completely different in properties from the original substance. The transformation of chemical substance into another chemical substance is known as chemical reaction. For example, rusting of iron, the setting of milk into curd, digestion of food, respiration, etc. What is actually meant by a chemical reaction? How do we know that a chemical reaction has taken place? Let us perform an experiment to find the answer to these questions. Burning of a magnesium ribbon in air. For this experiment we need a burner, small part of magnesium ribbon, sand paper, a tong, and a watch glass. Follow these steps. Take a magnesium ribbon. Rub and clean the magnesium ribbon with sand paper. This is done to remove the protective layer of basic magnesium carbonate from the surface of the magnesium ribbon. Hold the ribbon using a pair of tongs. Burn the ribbon using a spurt lamp or a burner. The burning ribbon should be held at arm's length. Do not look directly at the burning ribbon. You must have observed that magnesium ribbon burns with a dazzling white flame and changes into a white powder which is collected in a watch glass. Due to the reaction between magnesium and oxygen present in the air a new substance called magnesium oxide is formed. It is a state change of magnesium to magnesium oxide. The substances which take part in a chemical reaction are called reactants. The new substances produced as a result of a chemical reaction are called products. Any of the following observations helps us to determine whether a chemical reaction has taken place. In other words following observations are characteristics of chemical reactions. Evolution of gas. The chemical reaction between zinc and dilute sulfuric acid is characterized by the evolution of hydrogen gas. Change in color. The chemical reaction between citric acid and purple colored potassium permanganate solution is characterized by a change in color from purple to colorless. Change in state of substance. The combustion reaction of candle wax is characterized by a change in state from solid to liquid and gas. Because the wax is a solid, Water formed by the combustion of wax is a liquid at room temperature. Whereas, carbon dioxide produced by the combustion of wax is a gas. There are some chemical reactions which can show more than one characteristics. Change in temperature. The chemical reaction between zinc granules and dilute sulfuric acid is also characterized by a change in temperature. Which is a rise in temperature. Formation of precipitate. The chemical reaction between sulfuric acid and barium chloride solution is characterized by the formation of a white precipitate of barium sulfate. As we observe the changes around us, we can see that there is a large variety of chemical reactions taking place around us. Chemical equation When a magnesium ribbon is burnt in oxygen, it gets converted to magnesium oxide. This description of a chemical reaction in a sentence form is quite long. The simplest way to do this is to write it in the form of a word equation. Magnesium plus oxygen produce magnesium oxide. The left-hand side of a chemical equation represents the reactants. And the right-hand side represents the products. Is there any other shorter way for representing chemical equations? Representation of chemical reaction using symbols and formulae of the substances is called chemical equation. Chemical equations were first formulated by the French chemist Jean Vaigan in the year 1615. If you recall formulae of magnesium, oxygen, and magnesium oxide, the above word equation can be written as. The reactants and the products can be separated by one of the following four symbols. In order to describe a net forward reaction. This symbol is used. In order to describe a state of chemical equilibrium, this symbol is used. To denote stoichiometric relationships, this symbol is used. In order to describe a reaction that occurs in both forward and backward directions, this symbol is used. A few examples of chemical equations are listed below. A chemical equation is a way to represent the chemical reaction in a concise and informative way. A chemical equation can be divided into two types. First one is, balanced chemical equation. A balanced chemical equation has the number of atoms of each element equal on both sides. 
Here is an example. In this equation, numbers of zinc, hydrogen and sulfate are equal on both sides, so it is a balanced chemical equation. Second one is. Unbalanced chemical equation. If the number of atoms of each element in reactants is not equal to the number of atoms of each element present in the product, then the chemical equation is called unbalanced chemical equation. For example. In this example, a number of atoms of elements are not equal on two sides of the reaction. So it is a unbalanced chemical equation. Balancing a chemical equation. The number of atoms of each element remains the same, before and after a chemical reaction. Hence, we need to balance a skeletal chemical equation. Let us try to balance the following chemical equation step by step. Step 1. To balance a chemical equation, first draw boxes around each formula. Do not change anything inside the boxes while balancing the equation. Step 2. List the number of atoms of different elements present in the unbalanced equation elements we have. Iron, hydrogen, and oxygen. On the left-hand side. Iron has one atom, hydrogen has two atoms, and oxygen has only one atom. And on the right-hand side. Iron has three, hydrogen has two, and oxygen has four atoms. Step 3. Start with the compound that contains the maximum number of atoms. It may be a reactant or a product. Using these criteria, we select Fe3O4 and the element oxygen in it. There are four oxygen atoms on the right-hand side and only one on the left-hand side. To balance oxygen atoms we can put coefficient 4 as 4H2O and not H2O4 or H2O4. Because you must be remembered that we cannot alter the formulae of the compounds or elements involved in the reactions. Now the equation is partly balanced. Step 4. Iron Fe and hydrogen H atoms are still not balanced. Pick any of these elements to proceed further. 4 into 2 means 8. So there are 8 atoms of hydrogen on left-hand side. Now how many hydrogen atom on right and side? Yes. There is only 2 atoms. To equalize the number of hydrogen atoms we will put coefficient 4 at H2. Step 5. Now only one element is left to be balanced, that is, iron. To equalize Fe, we take three atoms of Fe on the left-hand side. Step 6. To check the correctness of the balanced equation, we count atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. The numbers of atoms of elements on both sides of are equal. This equation is now balanced. This method of balancing chemical equations is called hit and trial method as we make trials to balance the equation by using the smallest whole number coefficient. Step 7. Writing symbols of physical states. To make a chemical equation more informative, the physical states of the reactants and products are mentioned along with their chemical formulae. The gaseous, liquid, aqueous, and solid states of reactants and products are represented by the notations G, L, A, Q, and S respectively. The word aqueous a -Q, is written if the reactant or product is present as a solution in water. Note that the symbol G is used with H2O to indicate that in this reaction water is used in the form of steam. Usually physical states are not included in a chemical equation unless it is necessary to specify them. Types of chemical reaction Chemical reactions can be classified in following types. Combination reaction Decomposition reaction It has its three parts. Thermal decomposition electrolytic decomposition", and photolysis or photodecomposition reaction, displacement reaction, double displacement reaction, oxidation and reduction reactions. A reactions in which two or more reactants combine to form one product are called combination reactions. Combination reaction is also known as a synthesis reaction. A general decomposition reaction can be represented as follows. A plus B converted into AB. Let's try an activity for better understating. Take a small amount of calcium oxide or quick lime in a beaker. Slowly add water to this. Check temperature of the solution. Do you notice any change in temperature? Calcium oxide reacts vigorously with water to produce slaked lime or calcium hydroxide and releasing a large amount of heat. 
In this reaction, calcium oxide and water combine to form a single product, calcium hydroxide. Here are some more examples of combination reactions. Burning of coal. Formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen. Reactions in which heat is released along with the formation of products are called exothermic chemical reactions. Examples of exothermic chemical reactions are burning of natural gas and respiration, in which glucose combines with oxygen in the cells of our body and provides energy. Decomposition reaction. Reactions in which one compound decomposes in two or more compounds or elements are known as decomposition reaction. A decomposition reaction is just the opposite of combination reaction. A general decomposition reaction can be represented as follows. A B converted into A plus B. When calcium carbonate is heated, it decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Thermal decomposition. The decomposition of a substance on heating is known as thermal decomposition. Let's try an activity. Take about 2 gram ferrous sulfate crystals in a dry boiling tube. Note the color of the ferrous sulfate crystals. Heat the boiling tube over the flame of a burner or spirit lamp. Observe the color of the crystals after heating. The green color of the ferrous sulfate crystals has changed. In this reaction a single reactant breaks down to give simpler products. Electrolytic decomposition. Reactions in which compounds decompose into simpler compounds because of passing of electricity, are known as electrolytic decomposition. This is also known as electrolysis. Let's try an activity for better understating. Take a plastic mug and drill two holes at its base and fit rubber stoppers in these holes. Insert carbon electrodes in these rubber stoppers. Connect these electrodes to a 6-volt battery. Fill the mug with water such that the electrodes are immersed. Add a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid to the water. Take two test tubes filled with water and invert them over the two carbon electrodes. Switch on the current and leave the apparatus undisturbed for some time. You will observe the formation of bubbles at both the electrodes. These bubbles displace water in the test tubes. Once the test tubes are filled with the respective gases, remove them carefully. Test these gases one by one by bringing a burning candle close to the mouth of the test tubes. This step must be performed carefully. First we will test the test tube which has more gas. It contains hydrogen gas. Now we will test the second test tube. In this, the flame of the candle burned more. That means, it contains oxygen gas. When electricity is passed in water, it decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen. And photolysis or photodecomposition reaction. Reactions in which a compound decomposes because of sunlight are known as photolysis or photodecomposition reaction. Take about 2 gram silver chloride in a china dish. Place this china dish in sunlight for some time. Observe the color of the silver chloride after some time. You will see that white silver chloride turns gray in sunlight. This is due to the decomposition of silver chloride into silver and chlorine by light. Displacement reaction. The chemical reactions in which a more reactive element displaces a less reactive element from a compound is known as displacement reactions. Displacement reactions are also known as substitution reaction or single displacement reactions. A general displacement reaction can be represented as follows. A plus BC converted to AC plus B. Displacement reaction takes place only when A is more reactive than B. If B is more reactive than A, then A will not displace C from BC and reaction will not be taking place. Let's try an activity for better understating. Take three iron nails and clean them by rubbing with sandpaper. Take two test tubes marked as A and B. In each test tube take about 10 ml copper sulfate solution. Tie two iron nails with a thread and immerse them carefully in the copper sulfate solution in test tube A for about 20 minutes. Keep one iron nail aside for comparison. After 20 minutes, take out the iron nails from the copper sulfate solution. Compare the intensity of the copper sulfate solutions in test tubes A with B. Also, compare the color of the iron nails dipped in the copper sulfate solution with the one kept aside. 
Why does the iron nail become brownish in color? And why the blue color of copper sulfate solution fades? The following chemical reaction takes place in this activity. In this reaction, iron has displaced or removed another element, copper, from copper sulfate solution. Some more examples are here. When zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid, it gives hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. When zinc reacts with copper sulfate, it forms zinc sulfate and copper metal. Double displacement reaction a reactions in which ions are exchanged between two reactants forming new compounds are called double displacement reactions. A general decomposition reaction can be represented as follows. AB plus CD formed AC plus BD. Let's try an activity. Take about 3 ml of sodium sulfate solution in a test tube. In another test tube, take about 3 ml of barium chloride solution. Mix the two solutions. What do you observe? You will observe that a white substance, which is insoluble in water, is formed. This insoluble substance formed is known as a precipitate. Any reaction that produces a precipitate can be called a precipitation reaction. In this reaction, when sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride, barium sulfate and sodium chloride are formed. When sodium hydroxide reacts with hydrochloric acid, sodium chloride and water are formed. The double displacement reaction, in which an acid reacts with a base, to form salt and water, by an exchange of ions is called neutralization reaction. Oxidation and reduction reactions. The chemical reactions which involve the transfer of electrons from one chemical substance to another. These electron transfer reactions are termed as oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. Let's do an activity. Heat a china dish containing about 1 gram copper powder. You will observe that the surface of copper powder becomes coated with black substance. Why has this black substance formed? This is because oxygen is added to copper and copper oxide is formed. If hydrogen gas is passed over this heated material, the black coating on the surface turns brown as the reverse reaction takes place and copper is obtained. If a substance gains oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be oxidized. If a substance loses oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be reduced. Thanks for watching.